Hey, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We would like to thank the Department of the Air Force School Liaison Program for making today's webinar, What is a Purple Star School Possible? Thank you for joining us. Um, we see that um, we do sometimes have professionals that join these webinars, but we would like to let you know that we appreciate you guys being here and welcome you to join us, but these are uh, webinars are targeted towards our parents. So we think even as a professional, you'll find the information and tips we present useful, but please note that they are insect parent support webinars and they have been designed as par with parents as the target audience. Um, before we introduce ourselves, we wanted to share with you a little bit about INSEC and its mission. So the Military Child Education Coalition, or IMSEC, is a nonprofit organization established over 25 years ago. IMSEC's mission is to support all military-connected children by educating, advocating, and collaborating to resolve education challenges associated with the military lifestyle. In 2005, IMSEC formalized some support and programming for those military-connected parents so that they may be empowered, informed, and proactive in supporting their children's educational journey. We strive to deliver informative and interactive webinars that address academic, social, and emotional issues associated with a military family lifestyle. Our vision is for every military-connected child to be college, work, and life ready. And I do see that we have some of you guys joining us and introducing yourself in the chat box. So please feel free to go ahead and do that. I am going to launch a poll here so you can let us know. We had mentioned that these are targeted towards our parents, but we do often see professionals that work with those military children in here. So we would love to know what your connection and what your role is when it comes to those military families and children. Um, I do see that we have some educators today, some school liaisons, a counselor, um, some that are putting others. So we do appreciate you joining us and we love to see you guys in our audience. So thanks for joining us today. And then I am gonna look here at the chat box real quick. Looks like we've got some joining us from Nebraska and Maxwell Air Force Base right here locally in Alabama. So always good to see you guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with introducing ourselves for myself and Marie. So I want to let you guys know who I am. Uh, my name is Sonia Mulak, and I live in Madison, Alabama, which is just outside of Huntsville. My husband is an active duty soldier for a little bit longer. We are on the road to retirement this year, but he is currently assigned to Redstone Arsenal. I have two military connected kiddos, one that just wrapped up high school and this weekend, in fact, is heading to college. So we are all about that transition and life change this weekend. And then I have another son who is a junior in high school here. We have been doing this military life for quite a while. My husband has been in for almost 31 years. So we've kind of seen it all, done it all, lived all around the country, but we're pretty happy to be calling Alabama home for the foreseeable future for now. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Marie and let her introduce herself to you. Thanks, Sonia. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marie McGarry, and I am joining you from Northern Virginia, just outside of D.C. Uh, I, too, have uh, two military kiddos, um, and my son is also going off to school this weekend. Uh, we're dropping him off on Saturday, and then my daughter will be a senior this year. So um, she has senior sunrise on Sunday, so this mama heart is, is probably going to take to the bed on Monday. But I have been an active duty Army spouse for uh, 22 years now, and have been with MSEC since 2017, serving as um, a professional development and student development trainer, as well as a webinar presenter and then started with MSEC as a parent-to-parent -parent, uh, trainer as well. So I'm really happy to be with all of you today. And as we work through the webinar today, we encourage you, um, if you would like to unmute, um, we are a nice small group of about 13. So if you want to contribute that way or feel more comfortable using the chat box, um, but this webinar we hope will be an interactive one as well. So at the end, a few administrative announcements before we get started. At the end of the webinar, we'd like to invite you to take our survey about today's presentation. And we really would appreciate if you took the two to three minutes required to give us your feedback. It's a key method that we use to tell our funders what we're doing, and it also lets us know where we need to tweak things a little bit so we can continue offering the very best 
training opportunities possible for you, the military connected parents that we serve. As I mentioned, you'll see that chat box in your screen and, and lots of you are using that to let us know where you're from. So we encourage you to keep doing that today. Um, you can ask questions and make comments during our webinar. Um, so definitely feel free to utilize that feature. You also should see a PDF file in your chat box that is labeled downloadable resources. And we'll put that in the chat box a couple of times today, but that contains the link to the resources and information relating to today's webinar. If you are joining us by phone, you won't be able to download these resources. So just send us a private message by uh, giving us your email and we'll get those right out to you after the webinar finishes. This webinar is being recorded and know that you can always view the recording later if you wanna review the material or if you experience any technical technical difficulties during the presentation. So let's get started with our learning objectives for today. By the end of this webinar, parents and caregivers will be able to describe the social, emotional, and educational impacts of the military lifestyle and frequent transitions, understand the benefits of the Purple Star School program and how it mitigates the unique academic and social emotional transition challenges of our military connected children. And then also you will be able to identify resources and strategies to for parents to help grow this initiative and in, which is in support of our military connected children. So we do have another poll we'd like to launch We'd love to know what the grades of your children are or the children that you work with. Okay, so we've got some answers coming in, Marie. It looks like we've got mainly elementary and middle with us today. Um, a few preschool, a few high school, but the majority are right there in the middle with elementary and middle. All right, terrific. That's great. So, uh, so we'll kind of focus in on that a little bit, but certainly be talking about, um, you know, preschool and high school and the importance of the Purple Star School uh, for those families as well. So terrific. So we have an activity that we want to uh, to do with you this morning. So if you could grab just a piece of scratch paper and a pencil, I'll give you a minute to, to do that. Uh, it doesn't need to be very big. It can be a post-it note if you have that on your desk. And we have some questions that we are going to pose to you. And we'd like you to jot down uh, those answers on that piece of scratch paper. All right. Uh, I have mine right here as well. I know Sonia does too. So the first question we wanted to ask you is, I want you to think about your daily or your weekly routine, um, the way that you drive home at night, um, a special place that you like to eat lunch, a, uh, a group that you meet for coffee. Um, and I'd like you to write that down on your paper. So we've had a family, a longstanding family tradition of of uh, Friday night pizza movie night. And we have our favorite uh, pizza place um, here in town that we like to get our pizza from. So I'm gonna write um, that pizza place name down. Okay, pizza bolus. I'm gonna write that down on my sheet. And the next question, I want you to think about other I want you to think about people other than family, if you are lucky enough to, to live near family, but think about people other than your family that you have established a relationship with and rely on. Uh, maybe you have a terrific hairdresser or a favorite babysitter. Um, so I'd like you to write this uh, person's name down as well. So I'm going to write my hair person's name down, Ms. Vicki. Um, I will tell you as a military spouse, that is one of the greatest transitions when you're moving is to find a good hair person. And I have some horrific bang stories to tell you when that doesn't work out so well. So uh, so I love Miss Vicki for sure. And then the third question I have for you is think about a group that you are connected with. So these are your peeps. These are your people, either formally or informally. Perhaps you belong to a book club, uh, your Sunday school group, your church group, um, the people that you eat lunch every day with, um, that you work with. Um, so write the name of this group on your paper as well. So I have a terrific book club um, that I've belonged to um, and look forward to that meeting every month. They're a great group um, of ladies and have really become my tribe here in Springfield. So, um, so write that down. Okay. And now I want you to sign your paper, put your name on it. 
And then I want you to fold your paper very carefully. So fold it in half. If you're good at origami, you want to do that. So fold it in half and fold it in half again. Okay. So these are things that are near and dear to you here in the place that you live. Um, and they have made a difference in your life. And you can't imagine your life without these people and these experiences. And then I want you to tear it up. And I want you to throw it away. So two words that describe what you're feeling right now. You can put that in the chat box. You can unmute. Confused and nervous. Not again. There you go. <laughs> that sums uh, it up. <laughs> right? Um, lost and scared. Oh, no. Love that. Little feeling of anxiety. Um, sometimes it's just that... I think almost like an exhaustion, right? I got to do this all over again. I got to start from scratch all over again. So um, we do this activity like why? Yeah, why, right? Um, this is a great activity to do to discuss that idea of about transitions. Um, sometimes that can be an abstract concept, especially for kids, right? Unless they've experienced that. Um, so it's a way of making it a little bit concrete. It's a way of opening that discussion. Um, it's a way of relating to our military kids and and kind of reflecting back, you know, what that might feel like. So it's a great hands-on act, hands activity. And um, I know Sonia and I have done this during professional development trainings. Um, and we've introduced it when we've trained, um, you know, teachers especially, and it's it's been impactful um, to use in your classroom. So we wanted to share that with all of you today. So um, so thanks for participating in that activity and for sharing your feedback. And I'm going to turn it over to Sonia. Thank you for for doing that little activity with us. It does really kind of help to bring it home. So I think it's a, a great hands-on activity that you can try. Um, I am going to drop a link to the Military Kids Now 2020 Ed Survey in your chat box. So you guys should all be able to see that now. And this is something that um, we had the survey and we had the opportunity to look at how military-connected children view academics, the military lifestyle, and transition. So this is all from their point of view. And on this slide, you can see some of their responses. So I encourage you to read the quotes on the slide. I'm not gonna read them all to you, but um, just really read those thoughts and see what's really going through their head and what they're thinking as they deal with all these things that they've loved and they've come to count on just basically like in that exercise being ripped up and thrown away and they have to start all over. So see how that makes them feel. And then I also encourage you to use that link in your chat box to open the survey, keep it open while Marie and I are talking today. And then um, I know it's kind of hard during a webinar, but later on, definitely take some time to look at the survey, especially pages seven through nine, because it'll give you some real insight into what the kiddos are feeling and thinking as they do these transitions over and over and over. So we do want to give you a few facts. Um, the average military connected child will attend six to nine schools during their K through 12 education experience. And I know Maria and I can definitely probably attest to that. I know my youngest has went to six different schools and, you know, districts and my oldest has done seven. So this is pretty, pretty much true and hits close to home. Um, children are particularly vulnerable during these major life changes like a PCS. So it's important to identify and understand all those issues and needs of a child during that time, whether they're social, emotional, or educational. And just know that your children's response will vary um, from child to child. My two boys do not react the same. And that can be based on their age, their maturity, their gender, um, personality traits, as well as that parent-child relationship and any resources or programs for military children at the school that they're transferring to and from. So just know your kids aren't going to necessarily have the same experience and the same responses. On this next slide, we can see that um, each child is unique and each move brings a particular set of opportunities, challenges, and daunting unknowns, including those academic challenges. So we'd like to hear from you. Please share with us some of those academic transition challenges that you have personally encountered. 
Um, I know for myself, my son had taken some algebra classes in eighth grade that were actually high school classes to kind of get ahead in math. And when we had transitioned to one school, they wouldn't count that. It didn't matter that it was a um, high school level course. It was simply the fact that it had been taken in eighth grade versus ninth grade, and they wouldn't give him the credit. Now, luckily, Alabama was very kind to us. And when we moved here, they went back and fixed that problem. But, you know, that's just one example from me. And um, Marie mentioned they are transitioning with a student who has an IEP. This can definitely be a challenge for a lot of our families and those 504 plans because often qualification criteria and services are different and they vary state to state and even district to district. So IEP parents or parents with 504 plans can definitely face some challenges of their own. Um, Ms. Murphy had put state graduation requirements. That's definitely true. And I'm sure any of us that have moved have found that, you know, we, my oldest has been in two different high schools and the high school he started at did not require certain courses in ninth grade that his high school requires here in ninth grade and that are graduation requirements. So we've definitely um, seen that. If you have experienced any others, be sure you drop those in the chat box. Um, transitioning with a gifted and talented child, that as well goes right along with that IEP and 504 plan because again, criteria are different as you're going state to state and district to district. If your child qualified in one state, they may not qualify in their new state or it may take additional testing and additional proof. So again, some of those transition challenges. Um, some other things that we see are just navigating the registration paperwork and retire requirements. I know I can speak a lot to Alabama. We have the Alabama blue card for immunization records and and they don't want to register a child until you have all their immunizations on what they call their Alabama blue card. So, you know, there are those little paperwork and, you know, simple requirements that are different from state to state. As you're moving from state to state, you're going to face that along with different curriculum um, grading systems. If you're going from a 10 point scale to an eight point scale or different testing, different schedules. If you go from a school, if it's a high school and it has a semester courses versus year long, you're in the same course. That can be a challenge, especially if you're one of those mid-year moves. All these requirements can make it difficult to transfer the grades and the coursework. Um, some states require entrance and exit testing, like end of course exams. Some states and districts have those different graduation requirements, like we'd mentioned. And then when it comes to the transfer of records, parents are going to need to be proactive. You need to ensure the district you're leaving forwards the official records to the correct individual in your new district. We always encourage you to hand carry those unofficial transcripts so that that can help in the registration process until the official records are received. But the school is still going to need that official transcript to make everything finalized. And um, moving from school to school, sometimes children can experience what we call learning gaps or overlaps. So if it's a gap, students may miss those foundational skills because of curriculum differences. For example, your elementary school may teach multiplication in third grade, but your new school taught it in second. So if you have a third grader, they missed that. That's already been taught at their school because their, their old school wasn't going to teach it until third grade. So now they're going into third grade not knowing multiplication. So they may need a little help, a little bit of tutoring to catch up through no fault of their own, just differences in school districts. Um, some high schools may start with algebra one and then geometry and others may flip it and start with geometry before you hit algebra one. So all kinds of things. And then the same, the opposite there, in addition to those gaps, you may have overlaps where your child already learned a skill in their old school and their new school is just getting to it. So they may be a little bored during class. So these are challenges that we can face as well. So we've talked a little bit about those academic challenges, but our children also face social and emotional transition challenges. So what types of challenges have you seen when it comes to the social and emotional challenges that your children or your family has encountered? And I'm going to drop that in the chat box. So if you guys can just, again, share with us in the chat box, I would appreciate hearing your experiences as well. Um, Marie, I don't know if you have anything you would like to share with the group on that. 
I was just thinking, you know, one time we moved back, we had been in Northern Virginia and had moved back um, and, and chose to do a geo batching situation so the kids could come back to that school. And I said, this is great. We've only been gone a little while and, and they can slide right back in. And um, I forgot about those challenges of middle schools and all of those social groups had shifted and friendships had shifted. And it was really um, what I thought was going to be a really easy transition was actually one of the most difficult ones because they were trying to fat, fit back into where they were and those things had changed and so um so that was a definitely a year of challenge and growth for for all of us sounds like it so you thought you were doing something that was going to be very helpful sacrificing as a family to help your kiddos but it it kind of backfired on you a little it bit it did and, backfire a little bit yeah, yeah. and then we yeah. rolled into covid so <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. And we had a move in COVID too, from a place that my family absolutely loved and thought we were originally going to stay and retire. And then we picked up in the middle of COVID and moved. So that was a real challenge. Um, some, some things that your children may experience when it comes to those social and emotional transitions are if your child's not as outgoing, it may be difficult to meet and connect with new friends. They may be lonely and missing their old friends. And if it's a short assignment, they may even be resistant to meeting new people because they're just going to have to say goodbye and move again. So why make those connections? Why even start at that location? Um, your child most likely had systems of support at their previous location with friends and teachers that they trusted. So it's difficult to leave that behind and start over. When we move, that means adjusting to not only a new school, but a new place, you know, a new city, a new home, and maybe sometimes even a new culture, depending on if you're moving to a completely different part of the States than you've been used to living in or a different country. So your child may just not feel like they fit in at all at first, and it may take a little bit of time for everyone to settle again. Um, they may just be tired of being the new kid again and again and again. That can be difficult. And especially as you're hitting those ages, like Marie said, like middle school, when everybody's trying to find their place and find their group, and um, it can be a real challenge. And then no matter how much advanced research you do, there's always going to be apprehension and fear of the unknown in a new location. Your child may feel like everyone else knows exactly where they're going and where things are, and they're the only ones that are lost in the school. So it can be a real challenge. Um, if you're moving to a location that's away from a military installation, your school may not be as familiar with the military lifestyle, or even if you are near a military installation, you may have a teacher that just doesn't know that military lifestyle. They've never had any part of it. They've never been a spouse. They've never been involved in the military themselves. So they may just not be aware of those issues your child may face, like a deployed parent or the needs and caring for the needs of an ill, injured, or wounded military parent and how that may affect your child and put them in that role of caregiver. Um, if you have moved and your child was involved in sports or any type of clubs, they may have already missed the tryouts or the signups for clubs, or they may not make the team because you moved to a school that has a more competitive team than they left. So that can be a real challenge. Our children face these and, and more challenges, but the good news is that there are some ways to mitigate some of those challenges and concerns that come with transitioning. So Marie's going to chat with us about some of those now. Marie? Thank you, Sonia. So, um, so as we've discussed and highlighted, and the survey has shown, your own experience has proved that our military children do face challenges as they relocate between schools. Um, that missing out on curriculum, missing out on the team, um, being that new kid, and so, um, so those challenges were recognized, and then um, the the impetus began. Well, well, how do we address these challenges? How do we help to ease these transitions? for our military connected um, students. And in 2017, Ohio, and I do see that the Provost Star School founder, uh, Mr. Pete Lupiba is joining us today as well. So we're welcome, we're glad to have you here and welcome Pete, Ohio, Ohio, yes. Um, they began the Purple Star School um, program as a grassroots initiative. Um, and that grassroots initiative has grown. Um, so as of July 10th, 2024, we have 40 one states um, that have Purple Star School legislation passed and five states that have pro proposed or pending legislation. So we have almost got that uh, entire map of the United States, including Alaska 
in Hawaii covered in purple. So just a few more to go. So, so how things have grown. Um, and the Purple Star School program has been adopted to help alleviate those pressures on our military connected students and families as they adapt to their new school environments. Um, we don't want just our military kids to, uh, to survive these transitions. We want them to excel um, despite the challenges that they may face. So how do our Purple Star School families, Purple Star Schools help our military families? Well, by establishing military-friendly standards at the campuses, or district level in states across the country. Um, designed to mitigate the unique academic and social emotional challenges of our military connected students and families during the times of transition. So they kind of looked at, you know, what are some of these challenges? How can we help mitigate that? What are some of the programs that we can put in place as part of this Purple Star School initiative? Um, supporting military connected children during times of transition, for example, uh, mid-year relocations. We think a lot about the summertime PCSs. But what happens, you know, we have military families that are relocating mid-year that have their, that, their own unique challenges. Um, missing out on the normal cycle of extracurricular activities. You know, what happens? You've been part of the team. You're going to be the varsity captain the next year, and then you're moving. You know, how do we address that for students so that they can have those, those leadership opportunities as part of their resumes as they're applying to college? Those social emotional challenges, recognizing that, um, that it's hard to leave friends and their support networks. And then helping children whose parents might be actively experiencing a deployment cycle or a separation. Maybe it's a TDY, uh, maybe that's geo batching when the family stays one place and the service member goes somewhere else for training or for school. Um, and sometimes those things can happen, happen simultaneously. You can have a PCS and then have an immediate deployment. And I know that's happened for our family and there's a unique set of circumstances and challenges there. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about how our Purple Star school programs are supporting our military families. So MSEC is the National Advocate for the Purple Star School Program. The Purple Star School Programs can be established by a state's educational authority or by the local education agency, that LEA. Each state has its own rules for their Purple Star School designation. And MSEC, we don't award that designation. However, we can help schools along the way um, support them to reach that goal. Uh, in the fall of 2020, MSEC partnered with the Center for Public Research and Leadership, CPEARL, to better understand the impact and the potential that this program presents for our military connected students and families. And then in the spring of 2022, there was a follow up study of the Purple Stars program showing how the program has been implemented and how it has evolved since its inception in 2017. So through those studies and through that information gathering and talking with people that have implemented Purple Star School programs, MSEC recommends including five study-driven requirements plus exemplary practices for schools or districts that are seeking a Purple Star School designation. So the first is to designate a staff point of contact for military connected students and families to serve as that primary link between the family and the schools. So that's your go-to person. So part of this Purple Star School initiative is that there will be a POC contact at that particular school or district. And then provide professional development for staff related to the needs of military families. When you know better, you do better. And so um, I've had some great opportunities here in the DC area, which has a large military population. And you kind of think, oh, I'm preaching to the choir. They know this information and they don't. And I've had folks come up to me at the end of a PD and say, hey, thank you so much. I didn't know how often our military kids are transitioning or, you know, thank you. I, I'm going to be, you know, more um, intent on connecting with those military connected kids in those first two weeks of school, you know, those fragile 14 days and making sure that they're plugged in. So sharing that information with our educators um, and staff at schools is really important as well. Establishing and maintaining a campus or student-led transition team to help new students become familiar with their environment. 
having a dedicated school or district webpage to inform incoming families of school or district policies and community resources for a military family. So having a dedicated tab on that school or district webpage specifically for military families. And then finally, establishing events that recognize and celebrate military students in the school community. Um, why do we need our military families to know about Purple Star School designation? Because military connected parents and students are the beneficiaries of Peace, Purple Star Schools, as well as great advocates. Um, and when you have that experience of being at a Purple Star school and you're looking to transition to someplace else, that's one of the things that I look forward to. Does this new district, school district, have a Purple Star school program? Um, you know, which schools are Purple Star school designated? Um, and that can really make a difference in terms of choosing where I want to live, um, what schools I want my kids to go to, because when I know that Purple Star school, that they have that designation as well, then I know that continuity of care for my student and my military families is going to happen because these these key um, programs and, and supports are in place. So we're going to do a little bit deeper dive in the next few slides into each one of these as well. And Sonia's going to start with our Purple Star point of contact. Yes. So first up, we'd like to get a little feedback from you guys. So using your reaction button, which at the bottom of your screen, it should be there with a little smiley face. So if you just click that up um, little arrow there, that carrot, you can access those reactions. So using that button, give us a thumbs up. I see some coming in. If you've ever filled out a form that asks if you are a military connected when enrolling your student at a new school. Okay, so I'm seeing some thumbs up. So that's awesome. Um, so that's a good thing. That means our schools are doing a great job with that. Um, a lot of times our schools have uh, questions about how to get more information on this, how to get more people to respond. Um, I do want to kind of acknowledge that Ms. Fleming has her hand raised there. Ms. Fleming, can you, I don't know if we can give you access to speak during the webinar, but can you drop it in the chat box for us? Or was that just maybe a mistake? Um, it might have been trying to do that, that insect reaction and hit the wrong one. Okay, so we've got um, several people commenting, some in the chat box and some just on the screen with those reactions. So I appreciate it. But a lot of times our schools face a challenge with getting this question answered because a lot of our parents aren't aware of why your school is asking for that information. And you may be a parent or you may be a professional that works with the students and not be sure why are you even asking that question. So the Military Student Identifier, or MSI, was established as federal policy in 2015 with the Every Student Succeeds Act, or it's often referred to as ESSA. So if you hear the term ESSA, that's what it's respond, that's what it's implying. Um, this is an important act because it identifies that military-connected students are a distinct subgroup, and it allows services to be tailored to support their unique needs. Some of these needs that we've already talked about and mentioned that are unique to our population. But to assist our students, they first have to be identified. So that's where that form comes in that I was asking if you've ever filled out. Um, the parents need to correctly fill out that information and identify their students so that they can be a part of this group and they can be included in our um, point of contacts information so that we can reach out to them. Um, the MSEC and CPRL 2022 report that we mentioned under a previous slide confirms the importance of the use of the MSI upon enrollment. It helps to identify, advocate, connect, and support those military-connected students' academic and social emotional um, success. And I'm going to drop another link to that report in your chat box so you guys be sure and you can have that available to you. Um, and then we've got a response in there from Ms. Fleming. She says, the problem is that it's not consistently or effectively tracking it within the districts. Also, no standard database that sends to the state. They're a self-reporting state. Um, and parents are confused when filling out as guard reserve. Do they fill out active duty or military affiliated? And you're exactly right, Ms. Fleming. And that's where we always like to say education, education, education. Because if the parents don't know why they're filling it out, a lot of them won't answer it. Or if they're not sure if it applies to them or not, they just won't answer it. So it really comes back to educating your population, educating your staff and your parents on why you're asking it and who does it apply to. So we're always kind of working to help 
refine that and make it clear and clear to our population. But you're you're exactly right. That's what we hear all the time from schools and from parents is that they're just not sure about it. They're not sure why they need to fill it out or who it applies to and whether they fall under the correct um, guidance for filling it out or not. So identifying those students at enrollment with the MSI does ensure that new military connected students and their families are immediately introduced to the Purple Star School point of contact at their school. And if you're a Purple Star School, Miss Fleming, or any of those others, that may be the perfect person to point those parents to if they're unsure. They should be able to answer those questions for them. Um, that POC can then begin to help them make those first connections and create that sense of belonging for our military connected students. So we have that point of contact from military families. It's one of the requirements for Purple Star Schools. Um, and it's generally a school or district-based staff employee who advocates for military connected students and who has had some of that professional development so that they can understand it a little bit more. So the role of that Purple Star School point of contact is to help identify military students at bond enrollment through the use of the MSI, to advocate for the needs of military connected students within the school and community, to share community, national, and web-based resources with students, parents, and staff, and then following on with those families and supporting them by planning and organizing that care throughout the school year of those military-connected children in the school. And that can be things like those welcome and exit folders when they leave, um, recognition events for military-connected children throughout the school year, and keeping families up to date on what's going on in the communities that applies to them. And then those peer-led transition teams at the school to provide those school tours or to provide a lunch buddy for that new student. So it's not just a beginning of year thing. That's important to note. It's a year-long experience. It's continual. So that is all falling under the point of contact. Um, and then we want to kind of move on a little bit. I've got a few things here in the chat box that I want to go back and kind of make sure I'm addressing. Um, okay, so Ms. Lamina responded and just said that she's still working with her school. She's the school liaison. Um, and then another, uh, Ms. Kaylee had responded and said they don't ask for a specific branch of military. And they usually don't. Usually they just ask if they're military affiliated because that's what the MSI is gathering, military or not military. It, it doesn't specify or break down between the different branches usually. And so I, before we move but, on to, I don't know if you can see this, um, but um, Ms. Kristen has a question. She said that our school system has 15 schools, 12 elementary, three middle, one high school. Does there need to be a point of contact at each school or one point of contact per school system? Um, it's going to depend on your state's rules um, because every state kind of outlines the requirements for Purple Star certification and what they will accept, whether it's just a district contact or whether it has to be a contact at each school. But because we are the advocate and not the certifying official as MSEC, we have to refer back to what your state says as their requirements and their rules. And I don't know, Marie, you may have something to add on to that. I'm just wondering too, you know, in terms of folks and that just to have one person for all of those schools, I think would be a huge role um, just in terms of getting people on board. Um, it might be easier to have one point of contact at the school. Um, I don't know, um, Pete, if you have any, you know, guidance on this or if there's best practices. Um, again, I think look at that state guidance um, as well, but um, that seems like to have one person for all of that would be a, would be a big job. And I do know here- State local, Department of Ed, yeah, check, yeah. check with them and, and get that. Yeah. I know here locally, we have had systems that have started with one point of contact when they're just kind of getting their feet on the ground, but then the goal is to get a contact at each school. And for that reason, because that would be a huge role, especially if you're in an area that has a lot of military connected children, it would be a lot for one person to take on. But every state kind of breaks down their own rules and their, their specifications. I know here in Alabama, we have a rubric that tells you exactly what you have to do and how you're going to prove that. So your state department of education, like um, Pete Lefeva had said, is really your best place to point you to. And I hate to tell you, I don't know, but every state is just different. So we have to send you back to your state for that particular answer for the requirement. 
All right, so our, we're gonna go ahead and move on then to our second requirement, which is that Purple Star School professional development. So as your family's transitioning and your child's moving through these different schools and teachers in those schools, some of those teachers may have a good understanding of your military lifestyle. Some may even be former military themselves or spouses of military. Maybe they were children, their parents were military, um, but some of those teachers may not know much about the military. So what we want to ask you now in the chat box and have you have a chance to respond is, what do you wish that school staff would understand about that military lifestyle that you're living? What do you think is most important that the school staff understood that your family's coming in contact with? While you guys are thinking about that, we'll just kind of move on a little bit. There's some things to kind of get you thinking. Um, mission stressors. I, I love that. You know, there's a lot of times there's more going on behind the scenes than you realize. You don't realize everything that comes into play as units are prepping for a mission. That's a lot of stress that goes all the way down the family. It's not just that active duty person or that military member that's feeling that stress. It goes throughout the entire family, and it can definitely affect the children day to day um, in their school life. That can come out in various ways, both positive and negative. I know a lot of times we laugh about all the acronyms. I often say that my husband speaks a different language, and I'm always the translator, translator for his family, for the schools, for everyone else, because he just automatically goes to all the acronyms. Um, we've got that deployment cycle, and it is a cycle. There are several stages to it. The culture, that's a really good one to drop into there. Um, any other thoughts from anyone? Well, some of those major frustrations for military families, and please continue to respond, but um, some of the major ones that we see that happen when the school personnel don't understand the military are those Deployments. There's a lot that goes into the deployment, like Marie had said, that deployment cycle. It's not just the part when the active duty member or the person who's been activated is actually gone. There's the lead up. There's the welcome home. There's a lot of things that come into play with that. Um, Marie had mentioned that they geo batched. You know, that's a term that people may be not familiar with and not understand. You know, why does your dad not live here? Why are you living somewhere else? Um, so that's something that would be nice to understand. That idea of moving every two to three years can be a very foreign concept to a lot of people. Um, or if they're a military-connected caregiver, a youth caregiver in a role, filling that role for their parent, that can be a challenge. That can put a lot of stress and strain on them and a lot of extra work. And it may affect things like homework, studying for a test. Um, they may be sleepy at school because they've been up caring for a parent. You just don't know. Um, those deployment cycles are changing currently. That's true. And they change all the time. Even when you think you know when you're leaving or you think you know when you're coming back, they don't. And that's a stressor in and of itself. Um, I know just understanding the whole process of moving and living in a hotel. I, I remember one time my we were still living in a hotel while our house was being built and my child made a friend and the mom was very confused and thought we were a homeless family because her son went home and told her, I made this new friend and they live in a hotel, mom. You know, she had no clue we were a military family and this is just what you do until your house is ready. So lots of things with the military lifestyle that um, school staff need to understand and be exposed to. So one way to help them understand the military lifestyle is to provide relevant professional development for all staff. Um, the primary function of Purple Star School professional development is to educate and prepare that school staff on how to best need, meet those needs of our military connected students. And especially during some of those challenging times that we would face. With PD, we can help staff understand that Sometimes those military kids may need a little bit more flexibility. For example, if a parent um, is deploying, maybe the children need to be home more than normal, miss a little bit more school because they need to find the time to spend with their parents. There may be promotion ceremonies or retirement ceremonies during the day that the children need to be excused for, or it may be instances where they're caring for that wounded, ill, or injured parent. Um, we need to think about what it's like transitioning into a new school. 
Are there any of those learning gaps or learning overlaps that we had mentioned before? If there's some gaps, you may need to jump in immediately with some support, like a little extra tutoring, um, some help with the curriculum differences so that you can catch up and not lag behind. Um, children at the end of the school year, they may need to take those end of course tests early because they're PCSing. They're leaving before those tests wrap up but they might need to make some type of arrangements to take those early and then to get their tests graded and scored as quickly as possible and sent on to their new school district so they can be placed appropriately at their new location. So those are the types of things that professional development can focus on and can help with. The good news is that all the states that currently have Purple Star School, and Marie had mentioned there's 41 now that have it, they, one of their requirements of Purple Star Schools is to require school staff to complete that additional training on professional development, those special considerations for working with the military connected students and families. So that's a really good thing that Purple Star Schools are doing for our military families. They're making that a requirement and an important part of it. Um, the next thing we wanna talk about and jump to is those military family web pages. So we would love for you to use that reaction button again and just raise your hand if you've checked your school's website before moving or enrolling your child when you're going to a new location. Have you taken a look at that? Okay, we've got some raised hands there. Great, yep, yep. And some thumbs up, I love it. So that's generally one of the first things I do when I know we're PCSing is I get on my computer and I start researching everything because you want to get your kids excited, your family excited. You want to give them something to look forward to because they're leaving so many things that they love in most cases. So um, one of the things that I definitely look at is all the school websites for the area that I think we may end up living in. You know, we may not have a specific address or a specific neighborhood picked out yet, but I could look at, you know, the greater Madison area, the area I live in, and just kind of see. So those school or district websites are often that first opportunity that a military family has to get a better idea of the resources available at a school or in a district before they move. And they can see if your school is a Purple Star school, if they're familiar with Purple Star schools, that may be enough to sway them more towards your district and looking for a house in your district versus another district because they understand the value of being a Purple Star school. So that's uh, one really great thing to having this web page is putting all those resources out there available. And this is um, a requirement. Purple Star School requirements can vary from state to state, like we had mentioned, but they all require a web page dedicated just to military connected students and family support. And if you are part of a school staff, I want to make sure you understand it's a web page on your website, not a completely different website. Because I have a friend who's a web designer, and they've emphasized to me that that's important to make sure everyone understands. We're not asking you to build a website. We're just asking you to have a web page on your school or district website. And, and it could be either. According to your state, you could be required to have a school level web page for each school in your district, or maybe just a web page at your district level, or you might need both. So again, check those specific state requirements to know what you need. Um, there are many advantages to having that web page. It centralizes enrollment information and resources, and it can include things like a boundary map of the district or boundaries for even specific schools within the district. It could provide, if it's a district web page, a link to the schools in the district with their home pages. It's very important and key to include all registration information and documents that are needed. Because if you're a military family PCSing in, that's going to be one of the first things you need to know. What do I have to have to register my kiddo? I had mentioned that Alabama blue card before when I talked about Alabama's requirements. If I'm coming to Alabama, I need to know that because that takes some time to get that. So be sure you're making a list of all the documents that are needed to register your child and including that on your web page. Um, other items you might want to put in there are things like school calendars, academic planning. You know, we talked about those different graduation requirements. So let me know what your state requires and your district requires. Um, maybe the extracurricular activities and clubs and what does that state athletic eligibility look like? That can vary from state to state. What about those counseling and support services? You can include 
um, some of the school's support services, as well as some from maybe the nearest military installation, like your military family life counselor or like your school liaison that usually works with your military installation. So be sure and branch out. It doesn't have to be just school specific. You can put those links to other things that are in your community or nationwide things that help like MSEC and the MIC-3. You can include information like that. Um, that MIC-3 is something that's important to include the Military Interstate Compact because that lets military connected parents know their rights when it comes to moving from state to state. So be sure you're including a link to that. Um, your webpage should definitely include and provide your point of contact, or sometimes it's called a school-based military liaison contact. So be sure whoever that person is that you have that on there. Um, a good idea is to share state and district policies regarding those enrollment requirements, like we had mentioned, and the graduation requirements. Um, having that webpage specific for the information and needs of your military, military families is a great way to encourage that positive military culture in your school, your district, and your community. And I did just drop a link in the chat box to the MIC-3. So if you're not familiar with that and you work with military kids, you should definitely check that out and familiarize yourself with it. It's just a good tool to have in your back pocket and know about. And then we've got a couple other requirements that we want to cover, but I'm going to turn that back over to Marie and let her talk about those with you. Great. Thanks, Sonia. So we want to talk a little bit more about the Peer-Led Student Transition Program. So I'd love for you to raise your hand if you've heard of MSEC Student to Student Program or have an S2S program in your school or district. Great. I see some hands going up there. Um, in many schools, uh, they are implementing the Student Transition Program with the S2S program, but there are others. Uh, Anchored for Life is one. You can have a self-school-developed uh, uh, student ambassador program. I know that we that's what we have at my uh, student school, uh, my kiddo school. Sonia's going to put the link. If you're interested in learning more about student to student, she'll put that link into our chat box as well. Thank you for the shout out, Pete. S2S does rock and it's a great, great program. But a, a student led um, just, one of the requirements is establishing and maintaining a student-led, and that's really key, transition program on campus or a campus transition team um, is, a, is a component of a Purple Star School designation. Those transition teams are required um, in many but not all states, but even when the transition teams are not required, they often still exist informally, such that all new students, uh, not just our military-connected students, but all new students are paired with a peer those first few days of school. Um, um, new students are assigned a lunch buddy. Uh, they tour the school with that new buddy or their sponsor. Um, there's lots of advantages um, to this, you know, providing that support to mil incoming military connected students to help them adjust to that new school environment. That peer support can be really key to make them feel welcomed overall. It just takes that one person to make a difference. Um, it helps students with being the new kid. They can ask some of those questions that they might feel more comfortable asking a peer than maybe um, you know, a teacher or a school counselor takes away that awkwardness of being alone and not knowing anybody. Um, it also encourages positive military support of school climate and culture, um, that we understand this is a difficult transition for our military kids. You know, let's make it a little bit easier by giving you, um, you know, we like to call it a battle buddy, um, you know, someone that can help you through this transition and kind of show you the ropes of this new school. Um, it helps new students to acclimate and integrate into their new school community. It encourages them to learn about new clubs and activities, events at the school. Um, these students, peer, uh, peer students can introduce them to coaches, school staff. Oh, hey, um, you know, you play the violin. Let me introduce you to um, the director of the orchestra here. Um, and it fosters those personal connections and those relationships within the school and within the school community as well. We also wanted to talk a little bit about our military connected children recognition events. Special recognition events or celebrations helps to unify that school staff and the community to support our military connected students and families. Um, it's an opportunity to honor service members, um, veterans, military connected children and families. And a lot of times schools will um, center this around a national holiday or observance as an opportunity to discuss what it means to be uh, a service member 
to discuss what it means to be a veteran, um, a military connected student. So a lot of times you'll see these celebrations um, around Memorial Day or Veterans Day, certainly April, which is the month of the military child and MEMSEC offers um, a great deal of resources to help you if you're looking to, to have a military um, student celebration in the month of April. We always send out um, great packets of information there that you can download all for free. Uh, Flag Day, uh, Purple Heart Day, which is on the 7th of August, helps to bring awareness to the school staff, peers, community members about topics that they might not have heard about. Um, maybe they don't understand what the deployment cycle is like. Maybe they're not aware that a lot of um, you know, there's a large population of military connected students who are youth that are serving in caregiver roles um, for their service member, parent, um, grandparent that are impacted um, by care needs that they're actively involved, these students are in the hands-on care of a wounded, ill, or injured service member. So, so making them aware of that population as well, student population, helps to improve that overall school climate and culture through intentional engagement opportunities. Military families are able to learn about community resources. Maybe you invite some of those community partners into that school celebration and connect them with those military families and then facilitate those opportunities to engage military connected families in the school and in the school community as well. So we have a quick video that we wanted to share with you um, that talks about the positive impact um, and how Purple Star Schools are making a difference for our military kids. Caitlin Rodriguez was born in Dallas and has lived in North Carolina and in Alaska before settling in Westlaco. Her father sadly passed while on duty when she was only five. She wears a necklace as a reminder of her hero. My dad was a part of like Airborne. Obviously, I love him. I miss him every day. Um, this school, I just want to say. Thank you for doing whatever you can and helping me feel better as a military kid. Students who lose a loved one may need more emotional support. And Westlaco High School has done just that. TEA recently recognized the campus as a Purple Star School. The Purple Star Distinction is awarded to school districts or campuses, um, either charter or public schools that provides support and commitment to students that have the military connectedness um, indicators. They're always making sure we're okay. Like even if we're just going in to see our grades, I'll be like, are you okay? How are you doing? It makes me feel better and it makes me feel more secure in the school. Along with Caitlin is Alexandra Macias, who comes from a military family. They represent two of 25 families at Wessico High School. It can be difficult with um, going to different, you know, settings, schools. So showing them that support, that that recognition that we, you know, you have parents who serve the country. And we're so grateful for that. You know, we want to make that a big deal. Alexandra's father also serves in the army and is on and off duty around the state. Many times, she only sees her father on weekends. I I just feel special that they treat me with like. Um, sensitivity because we know about the background. I just, it's, it feels good to know that there's someone there that can, I can rely on to make me feel like that. That would be okay at the end. Wasico ISD will continue to provide and love all students who are enrolled in our district. For KWS TV, I'm Mike Gonzalez. So support and understanding, that's what I heard um, from both of those students and, and what that uh, difference has made for them of, of that Purple Star School designation. Sonia? Yes, so as we're wrapping everything up, you've heard us talk about what Purple Star Schools can offer you and your family, and you've heard in this video from those students what was important to them. But as we're wrapping things up, share with us in the chat box what benefits sound most important to you or what benefits have been most important to you if you've been in a Purple Star School. Um, the MSEC and CPRL research that we had mentioned earlier shows that that true value of Purple Star Schools is that it centralizes and it makes knowledge accessible to military families, schools, district staff, and those community stakeholders. And 
it helps to develop that community stakeholder network of support that benefits those military families in and outside of the schools as they're moving through the communities. Um, in fact, the U.S. military is now including the quality of K through 12 schools near military installations as part of its calculation, calculations in deciding those future basing and personnel decisions. So Purple Star schools can have an impact on that by making those schools more attractive and helping to retain those military families and bringing that economic benefit to local communities. Those Purple Star schools are cultivating a military-friendly climate and culture, and it's supportive of their military-connected students and families, both inside the schools and in the communities. They foster those diverse, inclusive, and supportive school environments through their initiatives and their trainings, and that serves all the students in the school, regardless of their military connection. connection. So um, what we want to remind you is that it is hard to be a new kid in a brand new school. It can be overwhelming, but those Purple Star schools are helping to make that a little bit easier as they transition in and out. So when you're looking for a new school, you may want to look for one with a Purple Star school designation. The good news is, as we had said before, Purple Star schools are constantly expanding and our map continues to get more and more purple. So it's easier to find those schools. There's 41 states. We just want to remind you on five that currently have pending or proposed legislation. So you can find this map on our website. I'm going to drop a link of it there for you. So I just want to let you guys know there are places to go and find that. So you're able to do that. That MSEC and CPRL Purple Star School program report from 2022 did indicate that 60% of military students and families believe that the Purple Star School program supports meaningful change. So many times families find themselves having to advocate for their military connected children and um, a good way to do that is just to talk about it, to put that information out there. If your school is not already a Purple Star School, um, if it is, MSEC can support you. We support those efforts, even if it's not with our 360 Purple Star Summits. I'm going to drop that in the chat box for you in just a minute. But if they're not, you can influence your district to consider becoming a Purple Star School by attending those school board meetings, the mayor, the city council meetings, and talking about Purple Star School. You can bring up the topic to your PTA. You can talk about it with your veteran organizations. Um, you can invite your school to learn more by going to our website. And you can always reach out to our MSCs. They provide that support. So I'm going to drop all those in the chat box here for you in just a minute. But we just want to remind you that we recognize that transitions do impact our military connected students, not only academically, but also socially and emotionally. So we want to make sure that you understand that the Purple Star schools are working to provide a positive impact on alleviating those common transition challenges. They're helping students integrate more quickly. They're mitigating those social and emotional challenges of being the new kid. And they're helping those military connected students stay on track to be college, workforce, and life ready. So as the national advocate for the Purple Star School programs, we can assist with all those recommended components that we've mentioned today. So be sure and check all these links I'm going to drop in your chat box here. And definitely, um, you can always go back and check this um, resource, which I just dropped in there again. It also has all that information in it. Marie? Thank you. And uh, thanks, Pete, for shouting out, um, what did you say? Idaho, right, is another new uh, launching in their Purple Star mm -hmm. School initiative. So, um, so that's terrific. So we do want to hear from you. Uh, we know uh, lots of great information today, so we're going to move through this pretty quickly because we know we're at the end of our time here. But we do want to hear from you, and thank you all for joining our webinar today. So we would invite you to take that survey. You can scan that QR code, click on that link, and the it will only take a couple minutes. And the webinar code that you do need is what you see there on the screen at 7324. And so um, you can connect it quickly. Um, pop in that code and, and be able to give us that feedback um, so that we can continue to make ongoing improvements. Our parent um, webinars, um, if you wish to miss one of our previous webinars, or if you'd like to share this session, those recordings can be found at our website on militarychild.org. And you can also find recordings on YouTube. And Sonia is going to put the links for both of those in our chat box as well. Another, as we start getting ready to start the school year, if you've already started the school year, uh, another MSEC tool that we would like to share with you is our school quest. 
It's an online interactive tool specially designed to support highly mobile military families and students. It has tons of great resources and tips to help students achieve academic success and well-being. It's a free um, tool that you can use. So scan that QR code if it's something that you're not familiar with. You can customize it. There's checklists, lots of great resources there. So definitely encourage you to check that out. We highlighted our military student consultants. They are a fantastic resource. Um, Mark and Terry, they're real people. They will get back in touch with you within 24 to 48 hours. There are a wealth of information on a wide variety of topics, specific questions that you might have about a particular student or your own military connected student. Uh, they're a terrific resource. And again, those links are there for you. Um, military Child Wellbeing Toolkit was developed for parents, school professionals, behavioral and mental health professionals and community leaders. Uh, this tool is full of resources for all aspects of military connected child's wellbeing. We'd love for you to explore it on our website and share it with others. There's a QR code there. And then Sonia's put the link in the chat box as well. We briefly mentioned about 360 summits. They provide opportunities for cross-sector collaboration, idea sharing, program support. Um, so for more information, you can go in. We do professional development, student trainings, um, parent trainings, uh, the QR codes. So if you're looking to bring that to your particular area, um, you can get more information um, using the QR code or the link as well. If you're interested in getting a certificate of completion, please complete that online survey. And then if you'd like to receive a webinar survey for a recorded webinar, you can contact research at militarychild.org. So we have a couple of upcoming webinars next week on Tuesday, August 20th, staying involved in your child's education. And then on Wednesday, communication 360. So those are both great ones to start off the school year as well. And all our webinars start at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And we'd like to give a special thank you to the Department of the Air Force School Liaison Program for making today's webinar possible. And we'd like to also thank all of you for taking your time, attending this workshop, shop, participating, um, and, um, you know, sharing your thoughts and ideas with one another. Um, so we thank you all um, for being here and your continued support of our incredible military connected children. Sonia and I will stay on a couple uh, more minutes uh, in case you have any questions, but we are going to stop the recording um, and we'll hang tight here. But thank you all for joining us and have a great rest of your day.